Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. With the introduction of the DJI Mavic Mini and Christmas rolling around soon, there seems to be a renewed interest in droning in Canada. And a lot of new people are confused about the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations. I have a ton of videos explaining all the ins and outs of the new regulations, and I encourage you to watch those. But if you've just bought a drone or received one as a gift, or hope to, Please watch this video to learn the basic rules of safe flying in Canada. There is one rule that applies to everyone, even when flying the tiniest drone. Rule number 900.06, reckless or negligent operation. No person shall operate a remotely piloted aircraft system in such a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or be likely to endanger aviation safety or the safety of any person. In other words, don't do anything stupid. I have an entire video about sub 250 gram drones like the new DJI Mavic Mini. If, if that's what you're thinking about, go and watch that, please. Now let's talk about more serious drones, those over 250 grams. First off, you have to register your drone with Transport Canada. It's super easy and only five bucks. You get your number and stick it on your drone. It's easy, it's mandatory, just do it. There's a link in the description below the video. Next, you need to pass a drone pilot certification exam. Sounds scary, but it's not. Now, I'm only going to talk about the basic exam. There is also an advanced exam, which is a lot tougher to pass. The basic exam is $10 per attempt, it's online, it's multiple choice, and it's open book. Yes, that's right, you can Google answers and search inside aviation documents to your heart's content. And you only have to get 65% of the 35 questions correct. This is not rocket science. But the catch is that there's a lot of questions that have nothing to do with drones. So you have to be prepared and not get rattled. I have a very simple study guide video that will help you understand the kinds of questions you'll be facing and tips for which documents to have open and ready for searching. When you do pass the exam, and you will, keep a copy of the pilot certificate with you when you're flying. That's another rule. By the way, you need to be at least 14 years old to get your basic pilot certificate, and you have to be a Canadian citizen. Visitors to Canada must be granted what's called an SFOC, a Special Flight Operations Certificate, to fly their drone in Canada, at least if it's over 250 grams. Okay, so you've registered your drone and passed your basic pilot certification exam, and you're ready to fly. Fantastic. Now, where can you fly? There are a billion rules, trust me, but it's actually pretty simple for what they call basic operations. Number one, you need to keep your drone within visual line of sight at all times. Usually this means no more than 500 meters away. You'll probably think this is a ripoff since lots of drones have much further ranges. And hey, you can see where you're going on your phone, right? Well, the problem is safety. If you can't see your drone and what's around it, you may not see a small plane approaching or the building behind your drone or numerous other hazards. And if something does go wrong, you can't always rely on the tech to get you home safely. Believe me, stay within visual line of sight. Secondly, you can't fly near airports, heliports, or in controlled airspace. I could rhyme off various distances and stuff, but there are so many special cases, especially since controlled airspace can be a surprisingly large distance from airports. And there are other no-fly zones all over the place, so you really must check a map. There are two simple ways to check. There's a website called the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool and a mobile phone app called Drone Pilot Canada. Full disclosure, the Drone Pilot Canada app was developed and is sold by me and a development partner, so I'm rather biased. But honestly, it is so simple to use and helps you meet so many other requirements of the regulations, like having your certificates with you or having checklists and keeping flight records, that the app is well worth it. I use it all the time and find it very handy. I love it. Anyways, in either of these tools, you can tell if your location is okay to fly or not from
from an airspace perspective. If you're in a red zone, don't fly there. It's that simple. Number three, you can't fly closer than 30 meters or about 100 feet from bystanders. And you certainly can't fly over people. Now, if you're with a bunch of friends and they're okay with you flying near them, you're fine, as long as you don't do anything stupid. But otherwise, stay away from people. Next, you can't fly in a lot of municipal parks, provincial parks, or national parks. For these, check in advance. Most do not allow recreational droning, even for sub 250 gram drones. Lastly, you have to stay under 122 meters or 400 feet above ground level. Most drones actually limit you to that automatically, so it's not difficult to keep under it. And 122 meters, honestly, is plenty high enough for some very spectacular views. And by the way, these rules apply whether you're flying recreationally or for money. All the same rules apply. The rest of the rules are pretty sensible for the most part. You can't fly when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. You must stay out of the way of manned aircraft and away from places where aircraft might be flying, like around accident sites or natural disasters. Just stay away from those. You're supposed to do what is called a site survey before you fly. So you're familiar with hazards in the area and who to call in the event of a problem. And you should be sure that the weather will be okay for the duration of your flight. Again, the Drone Pilot Canada app will help you with this stuff with built-in checklists, weather information, and emergency phone numbers. And while these aren't strictly drone rules, you should keep two other things in mind. First, don't land or take off from someone else's property. That's trespassing. And respect people's privacy. Well, there you go. Enough to get you started with your new drone in Canada. Register your drone, pass your basic pilot exam, fly within visual line of sight, stay away from airports and controlled airspace, stay 30 meters away from bystanders, and above all else, don't fly recklessly. Stay safe, fly responsibly. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, don't hesitate to put them in the comment area below the video. Subscribe to my channel for lots of other drone related information and hit the bell for notifications of new videos. Thanks again and happy flying!